uh, well, just forget that run. And uh, prior to that, well, of course, he'd won the uh, champion stakes up in Sydney. He is a wonderful looking racehorse. He's showing $3.70. The query is, can he handle the going? If he does, I think he'll win. Number two, Palace Rain. We know it can handle the uh, rain affected going. He won the uh, Caulfield Guineas in fine fashion uh, in, uh, in on a heavy track. And then he was bolting in the uh, Cox Plate last week when he suffered interference and fell about 600 metres from home. He looks particularly well. He was just a bit sore after the Cox Plate and that's always worry, a worry in, a, in an important race such as the Victoria Derby. David Hayes has declared him fully fit. Shoeshine Henry, number three. Well, he uh, was inclined to race fairly fiercely the other day in the BMW Vars at Mooney Valley in the race won by Kenny's best pal and probably didn't leave himself a lot left at the finish. He's going to have to settle a bit better over the 2,500 metres because if he does start pulling and wanting to race fiercely today, that'll probably red spell the end of his chances. And red cap uh, we saw go to victory in the previous event, the Wakeful, and they're carried here by this handsome grey Muirfield Village by Exit 5B. Forget his run in the Cox Plate again. You can say that about so many. Coronation Day beat him easily in the champion stakes, but he looks as though he's one of the ones to beat. There's a bit of a tip. Number eight, Kenny's best pal, ran home very well to win at uh, Mooney Valley last week, but it's significant that Mick Dittman has switched from him to uh, Muirfield Village in the derby, and uh, Kenny's best pal's probably chances each way. All right, uh, let's have a look at the other main chances. Number nine, River Hero, certainly a chance. A very good winner at Caulfield. He flashed home, ridden by Shane Dye, won by three and a quarter lengths that day. He'll handle it going. Uh, number 11, Reading, was a good chance, I think, until the rain came. He rattled home in the BMW last week at Mooney Valley, but uh, much better suited on a good track. And about the only other one I'd say is number 14, McBrave. I did see this horse win on close circuit television when he won at Cheltenham. He won by seven lengths hard hell. That was on a dead track. He looks as though he might handle it OK. But, uh, well, it's a tough race, and I'll stick with Coronation Day, Graham. Yes, well, I'm sticking with Coronation Day. Muirfield, a very good chance. And number 17, Racing Kentucky, train by Bar comes another we should mention. OK, the classic race for the three-year-olds, the double AMI Victoria Derby. Candidates about to go to the stalls. We'll be back to Flemington for the main race on the first day of the carnival after this break. cantering up to the start. Let's have a look at the tote rundown. Coronation Day's at $3.50, odds equivalent of 5 to 2. Palace Rain, $9.40. Shoeshine Henry, $30. Just One, $26. Muirfield Village, $7.50. Pallet, $20.80. Captive Edition, $22.60. Kenny's Best Pal, $30. River Hero, $6.70. Continue to shorten right up, River Hero. Check that style, $18.90. Reading, $10.10. Scalero, $52. Our Pompeii, $72. Mac Brave, $16.80. Tuscan Artist, the horse from Perth, $114. He's Classic, $89, the Kiwi. $24 for Raising Kentucky, number 17. And $109, about number 18, Sovereign Dan. Restitution is out. Wind pool of almost $1 million, $941,000. Would climb past a million dollar mark by the time they jump. And $634,000 for the play. So already the Derby holding over $1.5 million. Well, Gary, your tip on the event, are you going to stick with Coronation Day? Yes, he certainly looks nice. He's nice and relaxed there. He's got the right jockey. One I do like a little bit is Reading, but I notice he's still a maiden, but a maiden won it last year, I think. Two years ago, Two Fire Oak. Uh, Reading, uh, he's a very lovely type of horse, and uh, gee, he'll be suited by the distance, and of course, he's he's by Nassipore, and uh, Nassipore side the uh, Cup Quinella last year of uh, Let's Elope and Sheba's Revenge, so he's certainly got the right breeding despite being a maiden, Gary. That's right, yes, it's certainly, and he's been running home very well in uh, most of his races. So uh, I would expect, you know, on the bigger track, that's what the uh, trainers say the horse wants, but well, I hope he can get home today for them. Well, Bart's had a tremendous record in this race, and he's got three in it this year, Shoeshine Henry Muirfield Village, and uh, Racing Kentucky as well, number 17. Well, that's right, Muirfield Village was very impressive that day at Rose Hill when he beat uh, Super and Pose. And his runner wasn't all that bad at the Cox Plate because it was a pretty rough race. And uh, I think a lot of those horses, you're going to ignore they ran on that. Set to go for the double AMI, Victoria Derby, 2,500 metres. The light is on. Favourite Coronation Day. Set. And they're racing. Coronation Day missed the start by a length or so. And Shoeshine Henry a bit slow to begin with Tuscan Artist. One of the first horses to appear was Just One. And he immediately looks for the front running from Palace Rain. 
Macgrave goes up in a second place in, wide out on the track, getting to third, Sovereign Dan, followed by He's Classic. Coronation Day's worked up to be fifth going out of the straight. They were followed by Muirfield Village, Palace Rain seventh on the rail, followed by Carp Division. Going around them three deep was Racing Kentucky, and they were followed by Shoeshine Henry. Pallet back midfield from Alpom Play in Reading, two lengths to River Hero, who settled well for Die. Then Tuscan Artist, two lengths to check that style, two lengths to Kenny's best pal. And last of all was Scalero, and he's 15 lengths off the lead. Along the back of the course they go, 1,700 metres to run, and Mac Brave in front for Darren Gauchy. By length to Sovereign Dan. Third, the inside was just one. Shoeshine Henry going up three deep to fourth, and they were followed by his classic, Coronation Day. Seventh on the inside, Palace Rain. A length away then to uh, out on the outside, Muirfield Village. Carp Division, the rail. They were followed by Pallet back midfield, racing Kentucky three deep. Our Pompeys over on the fence, a length away then a Reading. Two lengths away, Tuscan Artist and River Hero. One and a half to check that style. Two lengths to Kenny's best pal, and a length and a half to Scalero. Well, there must be 20 to 25 lengths between first from last. They have about 1,300 metres to travel. And he's classic has taken over in the derby. Leads by a length to Mac Grave. Third was Shoeshine Henry, a length away, fourth Sovereign Dan. A length and a half to Coronation Day, who's back fifth on the inside. A length and a half then to Palace Rain. Muirfield Village is starting to make up a bit of ground with Racing Kentucky. Over on the inside, Carp Division, and then came Pallet. Reading starting to work into it. Out Pompey behind those, a break of three lengths to River Hero. Kenny's best pal taken to the outside and then came Tuscan Artist back at the tail of the field with Check That Style. They have 700 metres left to go and again they're starting to bunch right up. Mac Brave just in front of Peace Classic, Shoeshine Henry was third. Then Coronation Day followed by Muirfield Village, Sovereign Dan. Palace Rain getting away from the rail, running on was Reading, very wide out was Kenny's best pal. Around the home turn in the double AMI Victoria Derby and it's He's Classic, one of the outsiders in front from Mac Brave under pressure, then Shoeshine Henry. Here's Racing Kentucky on the outside, running on strongly. Muirfield Village behind them. Coronation Day got chopped off. 300 metres left to go. Hitting the front, raising Kentucky. Reading is wearing it down. Getting up along the inside was Muirfield Village. 150 to go. Reading a length and a half in front. Muirfield Village got to second, then raising Kentucky. Reading in front of the derby, and a maiden's going to win the derby again. Reading draws away to win by a length and a half. Second, Muirfield Village. Close up third, raising Kentucky. Then our Pompeii Palace Reign. Check that style made up ground from Pallet River Hero, a break to Carp Give Edition. Well back was just one, followed in by Mac Brave. Then he's classic, well back Sovereign Dan from Scalero. Coronation Day's run third last from Kenny's best pal and Shoeshine Henry on this one tailed off, and that was Tuscan Artist. Well, Danny, that was the one that I said I thought might win, and that story you did on NASA for anyone at home that watched that, well, I hope they back reading that. Uh, Boy, Damien Oliver, uh, he just continues to impress me as a jockey. Like, you forget he's not even 21 yet. Yep. Aguirrefield Village was a good run. Coronation Day just over-raced. He pulled very hard. I noticed at the 1600, Jim Cassidy, with when on a wet day like this, the reins are inclined to slip a bit in your hands, and he was in a bit of trouble down past the 1600 on Coronation Day. He certainly had his work come out coming before the turn, but Reading was... Uh Gee, he rated that perfectly, Damien Oliver, because he's a natural stay that would be running on, and he just let him flow into the race, and I made it a one-act affair in the last 200. Bart Cummings' horses, uh, Muirfield Village, and uh, Raising Kentucky battle on pretty well, and have emerged as very nice staying horses. But I, I thought coming to the uh, 200 when Mick Kipman angled for run on Muirfield Village that he was going to be right in it, but Reading was just too strong. And Reading, to me, looks like uh, with another year on him, he'll even be a better horse. He'll mature a little bit. He's still an immature looking horse to me he's by Nassipore we mentioned before they take time to mature this is his first win today and it's a seven hundred and seventy eight thousand dollar race Here's Gary the... looking at the replay 11 5 and 17 of the placings five second Muirfield Village and 17 is third race in Kentucky well he's put the issue beyond doubt at the 250 Reading's hit the front that's right and here you can see Muirfield Village Mick Dippen's gone back to the inside I thought at this stage he might get home but Reading was just far too strong I noticed just as they straighten up, there's a little bit of trouble. Palace Rain seemed to just cop a little bit of a check, but that might have been a little bit of the horses losing his confidence from that fall last week. 11, 5 and 17 are the placings. Fourth in was number 13, which was our Pompeii, and fifth in was number 10. Check that style. They're the winning connections, and what a moment that would be to win a Victoria Derby. Oh, it'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? You'd be absolutely elated. You'd be on cloud nine for, uh, for a long, long time certainly would it's amazing uh, Dan last year we remarked on some of these young jockeys coming through like Stephen King 
Damien Oliver, here's Damien here. He's got just so much polish this boy. Um, you know, it just amazes me the way he's riding, so much confidence. Gee, he's really vigorous. Really putting it together, Damien Oliver. That was a perfect ride. And uh, what a moment too for Gavin Kelly. That's his biggest success for the horse. It was a maiden going into today's race. Number 11, Reading. Gavin's talking with Peter Donegan. Yes, and it's a very emotional Gavin Kelly. How are the nerves? Oh, they're a little bit ruined at the moment. Um, when the rain came this morning, it really you know, put a damper on things, and I really was a bit concerned about him you know, going through this. The track's not too bad, but I, I didn't want this. You know, you want everybody to go the wrong way in a race like this. And, uh, you know, look, he's, he's proved, I think, that he was the best star in the race today. And, that was always the thing with him, that he went to the race hard and fit and he will stay the journey, so I think that's what won it for him. Did you feel any pressure leading up to the race because everyone was talking about him, oh, you know, a maiden might win the derby again? Uh, there, there was. A, there was a lot of interest in him and, you know, I, I think the horse showed, showed plenty of ability and uh, it was probably a pity that he was a maiden, but, uh, you know, he, he's a very good horse and uh, you know, I'm pleased that we finally got it. Damien Oliver, a wonderful ride too. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Like, uh, I chased a couple of riders for him prior to the build start and that, but couldn't really get anybody to commit. And after, uh, after last Saturday's run, Damien committed, and uh, that, was, that was nice too. Must be a wonderful moment for you. I think you try and convince your lady to win a Sandown Cup, but uh, this would probably put that in the shade now, I suppose. I think this is just about it. This is, this is perfect. This is uh, a lot of planning, and it's finally coming. Well, Gavin, the feeling's about to be complete as he comes back. I'm sure you want to be there with him. Congratulations. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. The trainer of the Victoria Derby winner, double AMI Victoria Derby winner, in Reading, number 11, ridden by Damien Oliver. There's a bit of a superstition. When you come onto race courses, the first person you bump into, you should follow. The first person I bumped into when I walked into the course very early this morning was Damien Oliver. And there he is, coming back to scale now. The skull cap raised, the winner of the Victoria Derby, shades of fire oak a couple of years ago when a maiden won the Derby. And it's happened again today. This chestnut horse has been too good. Number 11, Reading, taking out the classic race for three-year-olds. Second placing going to number five, Muirfield Village. And the outsider, number 17, Racing Kentucky, running third. There are the placings after the double AMI Victoria Derby. And a wonderful scene down here in the mounting yard. We'll take a break and we'll be back with more on the big race in just a moment. In the last two years in the derby? Yeah, that's right, Graham. I was really, uh, really thrilled to win the race today. It's been um, a little bit frustrating the last couple of years just getting beaten, but, um, you know, I was really satisfied to win it today. Now, Reading was a quiet tip going into the race, but most people thought he needed a good track. Uh, yeah, um, he usually a lot better on top of the ground, but... Um, you know, I just rode him quietly and um, getting plenty of time to travel up underneath me and um, let him wind out in the straight. That makes a big difference, of course, having the horse well balanced underneath you. For sure, particularly on a wet track. Now, you raced a fair way back as the mud on your face and the, the silk shows. Um, yeah, um, you know, I wasn't sort of too worried about how far I got back as long as I, you know, got him one off the fence and had a, an easy run through the race. And then you whipped out uh, coming to the 400 metres and uh, you loomed up as a big challenge right at that stage. Yeah, it worked out well because I had um, Muirfield, Muirfield Village back inside me in a pocket and, you know, I got a good cart up from some of the other runners in the race and um, when he straightened up, I just went for home on him. And you're out on the outside and in the, in the good clear going and a good run. That's right, yeah. The horse has a nasty habit of ducking in when he's under pressure and... I thought about changing the width to the left hand, but I knew he, he'd cleared them, so I let him go forward to the fence then. And he did duck in a little bit towards the post, didn't he? But no, nothing of any concern? Uh, no, not at all. He sort of had the race won by then. Good. Congratulations, Amy. A marvellous young jockey and another great win for you. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks very much, Graham. Thank you. OK. Yes, indeed, it was a great win, and there you can see it. Damon Oliver getting stuck into Reading. Didn't really need to. He went to the line. A very good winner indeed. There's the VRC Derby winner for 1992. We have correct weight. Let's go to the local dividends right around the country.